Hello and Namaste. In continuation with the non-linear programming problems after the detailed discussion on the Kantakar conditions, Karush Kantakar conditions, we'll be moving ahead with the Lagrangian or Lagrangian multipliers method. So in this session, we'll be having the target of to introduce um, uh, this method in general. In mathematical optimization, the method of Lagrangian multipliers is a strategy for finding the local maxima and minima of a function subject to equality constraints. That is subject to the condition that one or more equations have to be satisfied exactly by the chosen value of the variables. It is named after the mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. The basic idea is to convert a constrained problem into a form such that the derivative test of an unconstrained problem can still be applied. The relationship between the gradient of the function and gradient of the constraints rather naturally leads to a reformulation of the original problem known as Lagrangian function. So we will be going in detail of the Lagrange's multiplier method. So in this case, suppose we have got the optimized z equals to f of z as f of x as the uh, objective function subject to the constraints hi, hi of x is equals to bi. Then gi of x is nothing but hi of x minus bi. That means this constraint can be rewritten as with along with the constant or RHS side as the g of x. Then the necessary condition for a function to be a local optimum at the given points can be extended to the case of a general problem with n variables and m equality constraints. So we have to note this down in Lagrange multiplier we have to uh, deal with the equality constraint wherein in the conductor conditions we have dealt with the less than or equals to constraint. Now multiplying each constraint with an unknown known as a lambda i and the subtract each of the objective function f of x to be optimized the new objective function becomes. Now if you will observe here this i is moving from 1 to m. That means those many number of constraints, those many number of the unknowns, we need to add them up. And therefore, the new objective function becomes L of x comma lambda. That means the function L is nothing but the, the function of x as well as lambda, which is f of x minus summation of lambda i g i of x, i moving from 1 to n, 1 to m, sorry. Then x is nothing but x1, x2 up to xn to the power t. That means x is the column matrix having the column elements as the x1, x2 up to xn. So we have got n number of variables and m number of constraints in this type of examples. We are discussing on the general formula where m is less than n. Of course, this number of constraints should be less than the number of variables. The function Lagrange or uh, the L x comma lambda is known as Lagrange function. Now, the necessary condition for an unconstrained optimum of L of x comma lambda that is the first derivative with respect to x and lambda of this must be 0. That means we are, we are trying to find out the variable, the values of the variables x and the lambdas from this differentiation. So necessary condition for the given constrained optimum of f of x provided the matrix of partial uh, derivatives do g i upon do x j has rank m at the point of optimum. The necessary conditions for an optimum max or min that is L x comma lambda or f of x are m plus n equations to be solved from for m plus n unknowns. That means x1, x2 up to xn, lambda1, lambda2 up to lambda m, m. So this is, these are the equations we can form it up from this particular, uh, so those many number of variables, those many number of equations as well as the number of lambdas we will have to deal with this. Therefore, this m plus n necessary conditions also become sufficient conditions for a maximum or minimum of the objective function. From solving this equations, we are going to reach to the point at this x1, x2 up to xn such that the point of maxima or minima will exist at this point. Now again, this maxima or minima might not be aware in the advance of the question might be just optimized. That means we have to take a decision on whether the that, that x1 is at the maximum point or at the minimum point. But in case of the concave or convex and the constraints and equalities respectively. So we'll, we are dealing here with the equality constraint. 
Now, sufficient condition for a general problem. Let Lagrangian for a general non-linear programming, that is NLP problem involving n variables, m constraints. Of course, m is less than n. Then this is again what we have seen in the last slide. Further, the necessary condition as I have told you that L we have to differentiate with respect to x1, x2 up to xn. Then L we have to differentiate from uh, uh, with respect to lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda m. Then we will be having for extreme value. So, we are trying to find out extreme point to a local optimum of f of x is also true for the optimum of this Lagrangian function. Let there exist be a points x and lambda which satisfy the equations. Therefore, del of lambda x comma lambda sorry l of x comma lambda that is the differentiation of this is nothing but something like this over here where gi is from 1 to m then the sufficient condition for extreme point x to be local minimum or the maximum local of course of f of x subject to the constraint gi of x is equals to 0 i is moving from 1 to m is that the determinant of a matrix is also called as the bordered Hazian. Very important concept of the bordered Hazian matrix over here. Now, what exactly the bordered Hazian matrix is? So, D, some books are saying this as a D or some books are uh, taking the Hazian bordered. 0, H, H transpose Q, which is the matrix of order M plus N cross M plus N. So, so we have got the this as the capital D or the border Hegian is positive or negative where what is this Q? Q is nothing but dou square L x lambda upon dou x i dou x j n cross n and H is nothing but dou g i x upon dou x j m cross n. We will be going in detail with the particular examples with few number of variables in the question along with the few number of constraints. So, you will understand this type of notation at that time very well. Again, I will explain you this notation. But yes, I have thrown this notation to you so that you will understand the upcoming uh, videos when whenever we are going ahead with the questions. Now, what is the condition for the maxima and minima? The sufficient condition for maxima and minima is determined by a signs of last n minus m principal minus of capital D. That is the first case. If the starting with the principal minor of the order m plus n, the extreme point gives the maximum value, maximum value of objective function when signs of the last n minus m principal minors alternate starting with minus 1 to the power m plus 1 sign. As again I have told you, that means what suppose we, we, we are taking it here the, the uh, example of m is equals to say for uh, 2 and n number of variables say for 3. At that time we have to take m plus n, m plus 1, principal minor of the order m plus 1 that is it's 3 over here has the extreme points given the maximum value signs the last n minus 1 that is we should have the sign 3 minus 2 that is a 1 principal uh, minor alternate starting with the minus 1 to the power m plus n. That means we should have the order of that particular uh, sign of that particular matrix should be minus 1 to the power 3 plus 2 that is it has to be minus 1 so that it will have the maxima of this particular uh, uh, question. Now again if the starting with the principal minor of the order 2m plus 1 the extreme point gives the minimum value of the so if we, we have to have the minimum value of the objective function then the sign n minus m principal minus of the same are minus 1 to the power m that is minus 1 in this example to the power 1 that is of plus 1 we should have in this way then only we can we can have the max or min of this particular conditions again as i have told you we will be going in detail along with the uh, examples wherever we are going ahead with the examples now necessary and sufficient condition when the Con concavity or the convexity of the objective function is not known. That means what we have the question of op optimized kind of question with the single equality constraint. Now let us consider the non-linear programming problem at the involves n decision variables and a single constraint. So optimization, this is the optimization function subject to the constraint as we are discussing here with the only single equality. So we will have only here g of x. We have not given a suffix over here if you observe here. 
So multiply its constraint of Lagrangian multiply lambda and subtract for the objective function. We'll be having the Lagrangian function as L x comma lambda is equal to f of x minus lambda times g of x. Then the necessary condition is nothing but do L upon do x j is equal to do f upon do x j minus lambda into do g upon do x j is equal to zero. So we have to have this equation. And we need to solve them along with do l upon do lambda is equals to minus of g of x is equals to zero. After solving this from the first condition, we can obtain the value of lambda as lambda is equals to do f upon do x j upon do g upon do x j. Then the sufficient condition for determining whether the optimal solution uh, is obtained either max or min need to computation of the values of n minus one. Principal minus of the determinant for each extreme point as follows. That means here we have to go ahead with delta n plus one. So I have given the general form of this delta uh, x plus one. It is uh, again depending upon how many number of variables are involved. Suppose we have got only two variables involved. That means suppose we have got x one and x two only. In this type of example with one constraint and uh, two variables. At that time we have to just consider. This three cross three determinant over here. If you observe zero, do g upon do x one, do g upon do x two, and so on. Now, if you observe here in this general, we have to have this delta n plus one. So, number of variables plus one will be the order of this particular matrix. As I've told you here, n is equals to only two, so we'll be having delta three. That is, it's two plus one. Two plus one, we have. We need to solve it. And if you we'll observe, it's very simple to note this down. This this uh, Hessian matrix. That is, first row and the first column is same. That is zero. Do j upon do x one, x two, x n, and same as that. Now again, if you we'll observe here, this thing, which is nothing but the f uh, do square f upon do x one square minus lambda do square uh, g upon do x one square. This can also be written as l x one square. Because this f minus lambda times g is nothing but the l, so this can be written as l x one x two and so on. So this is what is known as the Hessian matrix in general. If the sign of the minus delta three, delta four, and delta five are alternately positive and negative, then the extreme point is local maxima. But if the signs of all the minus are negative, then it has to go with the minima. And there is no other condition uh, happens with except this uh, this two. Uh, either they would be minus plus minus plus or plus minus whatever it is, alternate plus minus. Otherwise, all of them would be negative. We will not have or we will not encounter where we have got all the signs of these deltas as positive. So if they are alternate plus minus, it is max. If we have got all of them as negative, they are having the minimum at that particular point. And that's all for this particular session. We'll be dealing with the next session uh, with the different problems. We'll be going ahead with the one constraint and the two constraint. Stay connected. Stay tuned with the upcoming session. Thank you. Happy learning.